In this video, we will be evaluating um, a definite integral, um, specifically the one that shows up on the upper left-hand corner of your screen, which is the integral of 3x minus x squared from 0 to 5. So uh, we're going to do this from uh, quote-unquote first principles. Um, later on, you'll be learning a more um, uh, efficient method of evaluating the integral, but for now, we're sticking with the uh, evaluating by using the definition, the limit definition of an integral. So uh, step one, we're going to figure out delta x, which uh, in fact is going to be um, equal to the difference of the limits divided by the number of rectangles, which is uh, going to be allowed to move towards infinity. But uh, simply put, this is just going to be 5 minus 0 over n, okay, aka 5 over n. Okay, and then xi, which is uh, the, the different uh, values of x at which the heights of those rectangles will be evaluated. Uh, a, 0, plus i, delta x, we just figured out was 5 over n. So i times 5 over n, and simplifying this is just uh, 5i over n. Okay, so now what I've taken the liberty of doing here is in step 3, um, because this is a, a multi-step process and the notation uh, sort of slows me down when I'm when I'm going through it um, I decided to shorten this video a little bit by uh, simply pre-populating the space underneath the the gray box with the with the answer with the solution with the steps of the solution so um, I'm just going to talk about it so what we've done here is we've started with the limit definition of the definite integral and we've evaluated uh, xi and delta x, so I've simply subbed it in. Now, the next step, um, you'll see that what we're going to do is to substitute 5i over n into the actual function itself, because this here is really the function, right? So this here is your f at x. Uh, let's do this. It's really this guy right here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in the next step. So, okay, now it's starting to get a little bit, uh, it looks a little bit uh, chaotic, but um, you'll notice that our function here is 3x minus x squared. There's our 3x, or 3xi minus xi squared. Okay, so that's all we did in that next step. So you can imagine in the next step, we'll probably be expanding. And indeed, that's what happens. So 3 times 5i is 15i. And then 5i squared is 25i squared. And then n squared is, of course, n squared. So we haven't done anything with the 5 over n yet. That's the delta x. Uh, but we'll probably incorporate that in the next step. And indeed, we do. We distribute the 5 over n uh, to each of the terms uh, inside uh, this binomial here. And so what we end up with is... 75i over n squared minus 125i squared over n cubed. Okay, so in the next step, uh, we're making use of this property that the sum of a difference, right? Remember, the sigma refers to the sum. Um, so the sum of the difference is the same as the difference of the individual sums. So we simply um, applied the sum of this expression minus the sum of this expression. And we actually did another step as well. We pulled out the 75 over n squared. And in this, in this case, we pulled out the 125 over n cubed as a coefficient. Okay, thus leaving us with something that is uh, critical to our process here, which is the sum of the first n integers. And here we have the sum of the first n squares. Right? So how we interpret these, this one we sub in 1, then we sub in 2, sub in 3, sub in 4, until we've subbed in up to n numbers, or n rectangles. Here we sub in 1, which would give us 1 squared, or 1, then 2, which would give us 4, then 3, which would give us 3 squared, equals 9, until we've subbed in n rectangles. Now, if you'll recall um, from a previous video or from your previous knowledge, uh, the sum of the first n natural numbers is given by this expression, n times n plus 1 over 2. And the sum of the first n squares is given by this expression over here. So I'm going to take these two uh, right-hand expressions and sub them in where appropriate into my 
uh, solution set here. Sorry, I shouldn't have said uh, solution set, it should be solution process, but let's uh, move on here. So there's your 75 over n squared. And this piece right here, the sum of the first n natural numbers, is replaced by the expression that's equivalent to that. Minus 125 over n cubed multiplied by the expression that's equivalent to the sum of the first n squares. Okay, so that's all there. Again, this is looking kind of like it's getting out of control here, but we're going to start simplifying. So in this step, uh, what we have is uh, I, I cancelled out an n right here with this n down here. Okay, so that's why I have 75 over n instead of 75 over n squared. And since this n was cancelled out, I have n plus 1 over 2. Same thing over here with the second term. I cancel out one of those n's, which leaves me with n squared. And that n goes away, um, and we end up with this expression right here. Um, in the next step, I pull out the um, constant 75 over 2. Right, 75 over 2, there's no n's involved, so we don't have to worry about it. If you're figuring out the limit where n is involved, you need to make sure that you're still uh, focusing on n. But anything else that doesn't have n in it, you can pull out. So that leaves me with, so 75 over 2 is gone, that leaves me with uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n. Similarly, uh, with the second term, I can pull out the 125 and the 6, and that leaves me with the limit of n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over n squared. Okay, and we're almost done, because as you know, the limit of n plus 1 over n is simply, or as n goes to infinity, is simply 1. As you sum in larger and larger values of n, say a million, you would get a million and one over a million, which is basically just a little over one. And the higher you go, the closer to one it becomes. So essentially this becomes 75 over two times one. The limit over here is easy to detect as well because if you were to expand the numerator, you would get two n squared. Now two n squared over n squared uh, would give you two. Right? with a little bit left over, but as those numbers get larger and larger, the little bit left over would actually be negligible. So this is what we end up with, 75 over 2 times 1 minus 125 over 6 times 2, and we end up with negative 25 over 6 as our final answer. And that is a demonstration of how to determine the definite integral of a particular example in this case um, from the limit definition of the definite integral. Okay, so not something that we want to do all the time. It is quite interesting how we arrive at that. And again, this, this uh, value right here represents the area uh, of between the curve and the x-axis where it's the area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis.